Uh, right, in today's video, I wanna share with you three conversation techniques that are gonna help you to build attraction and hold attention of the women that you're chatting to. Now, one of the biggest struggles that happen to any man is that ability to hold a conversation with a complete stranger. And for guys who just haven't got enough experience of talking to strangers or just talking to people in general, it doesn't even have to be a stranger, there is the inability to be able to hold a conversation long enough to build attraction and uh, take things to a point that you can ask for a phone number. So I'm going to share with you three uh, certain particular techniques that I know that can make all the difference to any of your conversations. Maybe you are using these, maybe you're not, but if you're not, 100% I recommend that you include them. So the first one, which is kind of a uh, an old fashioned uh, style of doing things. And that is the uh, the push pull technique. Um, I say old fashioned, it never really goes out of date. Now, for those who are new to the dating scene, you're probably sitting there going, well, what exactly is the push pull technique? Well, in simple terms, it's this idea that you are giving a compliment. So you're like pulling someone in and then you're saying something that's like pushing them away. So an example would be saying something like, you know what, I really like you, but I can just tell if we were really good friends, we would just have arguments all the time. So that kind of like pull in compliment, push away with like a, uh, not even a dis compliment <coughs> or, an, or uncomplimentary. It's just something that, is a little bit more cheeky. Uh, it just kind of shows off that you're being a bit cocky and you're not taking maybe things too seriously uh, in that uh, that humor that you're expressing. So what would be another example of that? You might say something like, you know what, I can tell that, you know, if you were my girlfriend, we would just have an amazing time together. But I think just every five minutes, we're going to get on each other's nerves. What are we going to do about it? So very, okay, very, very simple examples. But the idea of you say something that is complimentary, but you're also saying something that also kind of knocks the compliment a little bit, um, it creates this level of attraction that women don't tend to get to experience uh, very often from men. Um, so let's put it this, you get guys who, if let's say a woman says, I like cats. Um, and then you might have a guy who actually doesn't like cats, but he says like, oh yeah, yeah, I really like cats too. So he's not really disagreeing with her in any sense, but by saying something like, like, oh, you know what? I, I like cats, but oh, cat people are the worst. I just don't get on very well with cat people. Like, oh, that is such a shame. Um, you ticked all of the boxes for me on everything, but being a cat lady, oh, damn, that, that's the deal breaker there. So again, you're kind of teasing by giving a compliment, saying like, oh, I, I love all these things about you, but yeah, that one thing just doesn't work for me. So. Certainly in the comments below, I'd love to hear maybe a couple of interpretations that you could have of that. But these are just, again, very, very simple examples. So number two is one that I uh, I genuinely do like doing um, when I've had any sort of like newer interactions, I think over the last sort of five, six years, uh, if that makes sense. Um, and that is open loops. So open loops is this idea in fact, let's, let's, let's use a TV show as an idea for an open loop. So at the end of a TV show, you have like a cliffhanger that plays out. And then it kind of then hints like, oh, well, you're going to, if you want to find out what that cliffhanger is, you're going to have to come back next week to find out what happens next. Where does this sort of issue continue from that left on such a climactic moment. And you can have that in a conversation as well. And it doesn't have to be a case of like at the end of the interaction, you have to leave it on some kind of cliffhanger that 
gives her a reason to want to see you again uh, on a date or whatever. Uh, if you can certainly do that, brownie points from me for that. But when it comes to open loops, we're talking about the idea of that you drop something into the conversation and you leave the woman kind of like thinking about that idea and then wanting to ask about it later. So you're kind of creating this like situation of topics that could very easily lead onto more conversations later on. So what would be an example of that? Um, so let's say I am asking uh, a woman, um, I've, I've stopped her maybe on the street or in a bar or wherever, and then the conversation comes up of asking, like, what do you do? And she'll say like, oh, well, I, you know, I work in corporate, I do all this and that. And you then might sort of find out more about it and say, oh, that's that sounds very interesting. Um, but then I might say something like, you know what, that's very different to the job that I've got. But yeah, yeah. So, so tell me more about uh, this particular project that you're working on. So I've dropped the hint of that my job is very different to hers. But I haven't then gone straight into this idea of now, you know, me telling my life story, me talking about me. I'm just putting the conversation back onto her and letting her speak and just me listening. But what I've done, though, is I've created an open loop saying that my job is very different to her, but I don't want to talk about me. I want to talk about her. And that thought will sit with her or it will play on her mind whilst we're talking. And at some point, she is going to want to turn around and say, what do you do? Well, why is your job very different to mine? And it then opens up, you know, that other topic of a conversation. Now, obviously, then it can be however much I want to share about myself. But if you're then creating just things that you can drop in, it can be on anything, to be quite honest, really. But you could just drop anything. It could be you visiting a location. So let's say I, uh, in fact, like a few weeks ago, I was filming at Comic Con, uh, which is uh, an event in London. Oh, well, what am I saying? I mean, you, you, if you're geeky, then you, you absolutely know 100% what Comic Con is. But I could be talking to someone and then dropping in the fact that, oh, yeah, yeah, so I did filming at Comic Con the other week. Um, but yeah, no, so uh, yeah, so tell me about this and that. And then there's the opportunity to talk about, well, what was Comic Con like? Uh, did you dress in an outfit, you know, costume wise or cosplay? You know, what did you see there? What did you film there? What did you do? And again, it just opens up the opportunity to having more conversations. But one of the things that I like doing is, I mean, I'm more of a listener than uh, a speaker, you know, okay, making videos is a bit different, but I mean, I'm someone who prefers to to listen to other people than to uh, to necessarily speak. And I find for me, I only really want to talk when I've got something very important to share. And definitely the kind of questions that I ask someone tend to be a lot more in depth and a lot more thought about than just the surface level questions that most people are. So asking something like, what do you do? I would say is very surface level, but going that bit deeper, saying like, what got you into that? Do you enjoy doing your job? Is that something that you always wanted to do? And why is that? So you can go a bit in deeper, uh, a little bit deeper when it comes to creating open loops with stuff, because it gives you the opportunity to really flush out uh, a lot more questions that broaden and expand a topic that you could talk about, as well as for guys who maybe if they're struggling on like, oh, if they've, 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 if they've spoken about a topic and they don't know what to transition the conversation onto next, it can certainly set things up to allow you to have um, a conversation go on much longer. But the, all, the big problem though, is that by not dropping, um, oh, just me, uh, me dropping there, that's what I get for, for moving off my foot. Um, if you aren't at least creating some open loops, then you're also not really giving uh, the women that you're speaking to an opportunity to ask you questions. And I, I think it's safe to say that 
If you are the one constantly asking her questions and you're not getting any questions back in return, then it's a very one-sided conversation. Um, I'd even probably go as far to say that if you're experiencing that when you are going out and cold approaching and maybe you have spoken to a girl for like five, 10 minutes, and she still hasn't asked you a single conversation, you have to consider then one of two things. Either she is really shy and she's sort of afraid or nervous to ask you stuff, or she's just not interested. Of which then by using an open loop, giving her the opportunity to ask you questions back, you can know very early on if you're actually wasting your time or not with someone um, or if you are having a much more in-depth conversation. And again, the men that I'd love to be able to help or even clients that I've got, you know, they want to be uh, finding themselves, I was going to say working with, but they want to be finding themselves relationships. And to do that, you kind of have to filter out some of the women that you're speaking to. You can't just have very surface level interactions and it can't just be based also solely on just looks. You need to have some substance there. And the only way you get that is by making sure that the conversation goes both ways. So so hopefully that one makes sense. And also I'd love to hear in the comments below your thoughts on this particular one. What kind of open loop topics do you create? What kind of things do you maybe drop into a conversation that, you know, you don't then go straight into talking about yourself. You kind of leave it for her to come back and talk to you with. Um, and certainly any comments for this and even with the push pull is only going to give guys who are very nervous and who are anxious when it comes to conversations, just some ideas of things that they can talk about. I don't want scripts. Let's uh, make that clear because then that goes into the pickup paradigm, but just giving guys some insight into things that they could probably drop, whether it be like them talking about uh, dropping in ideas of work, travel, food they like, places they've been, etc. Give some ideas. Now, this last one, I kind of found it difficult to give this last one an official name because it's something that I've just very naturally done my entire life. And this is probably a technique that I would say is is one that fortunately no other dating coach has ever adopted or used. But for me personally, this is something that I, I genuinely love doing. And it's how I'm able to build such deep rapport with, not just with women, but with just anyone in general, without having to share too much information about myself or go into a, a such in-depth conversation, like talking to someone for like half an hour or so to get to this point. I can get to a very deep rapport with someone very quickly because of this technique. And I've kind of called this technique empathic bonding. Uh, if you can certainly think of a better name for it, um, then by all means also do leave that in the comments below, but I'm going to call this technique empathic bonding. So what is empathic bonding? Well, it's where if someone is talking about something um, that you just don't have any experience in because you just don't do it yourself, but you can understand the emotions that they're going through and you can relate it to something that you do that you feel those same similar emotions to, then you are able to kind of bridge this that knocking the microphone, you're able to kind of like bridge this connection between what they have an interest in and what you have an interest in. So let's use an example. I'll try and keep it somewhat extreme here. So let's say you're talking to someone who is a ballerina. Now, I can't do ballet. I'm not even going to attempt it. I'm not even really that flexible either. So, you know, if I try and do the splits, you'll probably hear me crying rather than cheering. Like, I can't believe I've just done the splits. But imagine then I'm, I've spoken to a woman and I've asked her, well, what do you do? And she says that she is a ballerina. I would then ask her things like, how did you get into that? What What's it like to do that? Do you enjoy it? You know, what's the story there? And um, she might then explain, you know, it, she loves how it makes her feel alive. Um, she, uh, she has a huge passion for it. 
she loves the uh the freedom that she gets when she does that as well um and how creative she gets to be and it's how freeing it is I'll, I'll try not to to go into that uh, too much more um so that could be then what she says now how can you relate to that if you've not gone through that same experience of being a ballerina and doing all that yourself it's going to be very difficult to connect on but then i might say something like you know what although i'm not a ballerina and i've never done that in my entire life I get how you feel with it because I feel the same way with how I run my business and how I get to help people. I love just the fact that with me being my own boss, I am in control of everything. I can do everything in a way that I know works best. And I just love being able to help people and hearing the results that they get. That's how I feel alive. You might be able to do it through, you know, being able to balance on one toe. But for me, just hearing that a guy has now got a girlfriend or he got himself a hobby or he joined a club or a group or something or he started you know working on his physique whatever it may be that is where my passion lies and she will feel that especially when you're being very authentic and genuine with your response because you're when you talk from a place of experience when you're talking about something of experience it's very easy to let that passion come out um, through your linguistics, through how you speak. Uh, I mean, although you probably can't see it because my hands are underneath the microphone, but I, I tend to be quite enthusiastic with my hands when I'm talking about something that I'm very passionate about. And she will feel that as well. And imagine if you're combining that with strong eye contact through uh, a vocal tonality that isn't going really high, which I have spoken about in another video. Um, if you're if you're speaking with a lot of conviction and confidence in that belief that you feel those same emotions as her through a very different experience, you're going to be able to connect on a very deep level there. So I definitely highly recommend trying that one. It is something that I I just do naturally with everyone um, because it's just an easy statement to say. Like, I, I get what you mean. I feel the same way when I do X, Y, Z. And I so definitely suggest if you are a guy who is maybe a bit nervous and you want to try and build a stronger rapport with women or you want to try and create a deeper attraction there, it is certainly one that can make all of the difference. So just recapping these three conversation techniques. So first of all, you had your push-pull technique, the idea that you give a compliment that kind of pulls them in, but you then say something that sort of somewhat pushes them away. You've then got your open loops, which is hinting at a new conversation topic that gives her the opportunity to ask you questions about that, starting that new conversation topic. And then the last one is the empathic bonding where you are saying something that suggests that you can feel the same way doing something very different to what she does, but you are able to then create a deeper connection through that conversation. So, I hope this video was certainly quite interesting for you. Uh, if you can though, do leave comments underneath this video. Again, I'd love to hear what kind of conversation topics or techniques you tend to talk about uh, with women, mostly uh, for my own curiosity, but also again, just to inspire other guys that you can literally talk about anything with women, but it's how you talk about the things with women that can make all the difference to building attraction and avoiding putting yourself, I've oh, got the hiccups again now i always get the hiccups whenever i'm doing videos i find that i always get the hiccups when i'm, I'm doing videos but um i share comment underneath because yeah it will inspire other men um with things and just show them that yeah you can talk about anything um that you want with women but it's how you talk about things that is what matters that is what is going to build attraction and that is what's going to get you your results with women relationships friendships um sexual partners and so on so if you can like the video if you found this uh pretty unique and interesting i know i did um 
comment below and subscribe to the channel. Stay up to date on more things that's going to help you with your anxiety. And I just know uh, all my content is going to make a big difference for those guys who are certainly struggling to hold conversations and whatnot. And if you are struggling and you do need help, then check out my website below and uh, reach out for a consultation. And hopefully I can help you to overcome your anxiety too.